Hi there, Dr. Tom here. Hey, uh, things are going well. Um, I'm not losing my mind or anything like that. Hopefully you're not the same. Um, I did bring in another expert. This is Dr. Harold. Hello, I'm Dr. Harold. Um, so, you know, don't have reason to think that I'm um, losing my mind or anything. At any rate, uh, Harold and I uh, are going to talk today about... Um, using the LCD. So this will be part of your project where you do the ultrasonic sensing. You're going to uh, read the data with the ultrasonic sensor and then you're going to... Um, oh, thanks, Harold. And then you're going to um, display it on the LCD. So uh, let's start, shall we? Yes, let's do that! Okay, so here we go. Um, so the thing to know is that um, this LCD is what's called, a, first of all, LCD stands for liquid crystal display. And this is called a 2 by 16. And what that means is there's two rows. Each has 16 characters. So, you know, um, you may have noticed that when you do code in a code editor, like all the characters are equally spaced. But that's probably seeming a little bit foreign. I mean, when computers came out, that was the, the only way it was done. And over time now, people expect that font is proportional. So, for instance, a W is wider than an I. Well, not with the LCDs. They're just basically a 2 by 16 is 32 discrete boxes, and you can put one and only one character in each box. By the way, it comes all ready to go with basic ASCII characters if you want to create your own character. Um, these little boxes are themselves grids of, I forget, it's like 9 by 16 or something, but um, you can actually define any arbitrary character using that smaller grid. So at any rate, in this example then, you see what I'm saying is distance equals 23.78 centimeters, and notice one character per box, and then at the bottom I put, put my name. In your project, what you're going to do is on the top, you're going to put the distance in centimeters and inches, which means you're going to have to abbreviate a few things. And, of course, you'll put your name, not my name. And uh, just as kind of a, uh, an illustration, I've got my working thing down there now. And the, the, the picture on the bottom there, I actually am displaying the temperature. I was having trouble getting the temperature accurate. It was room temperature, and it's saying 56 degrees. So, you know, I've got some sort of issue. By the way, I was doing that. If you've watched the ultrasonic one, you know that the speed of sound depends on the temperature and hence the interest in temperature. But we're not going to do temperature for this project. We're going to do inches and centimeters. And the whole idea then of doing inches especially is, you know, you'll you'll take a, a ruler and, um, you know, you'll, you'll sort of show the sensor here and you'll have like a book or something and you'll show that as, you know, you get... Um, say four inches away, your thing says, you know, four inches. At any rate, um, moving on to the next slide. Harold, do you want to talk about this one? Oh, yeah, sure, thanks. So uh, this is the hardware itself. You see the top is the um, front one. The bottom is the, the back side, and you'll see there are pins. Well, thank you, Harold, for that riveting insight. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Notice also on the top there's a... The little plastic, it's sort of a protective deal. I haven't taken mine off, but you probably ought to take it off. It'll see, show a little bit better. Um, these pins are spaced at the, they're called 100 mil centers. And basically, it's a real standard size for electronics. And your breadboard's on the same centers. What that means is you can just plug this right into your breadboard. So uh, the LCD, the ones that came with your um, Elegoo Super Starter Kit, um, that's the kit that you got on the first day of class, not the car kit. Um, the, the LCD that comes with it is, is what we're talking about in this video. But what you'll see there is you'll see eight pins that are like D0, D1, D2, D3, and so on. Um, the parallel bus, this thing uses a parallel bus for the data. There's a 4-bit mode and an 8-bit mode. We're only going to use, the software we're going to show is only using the 4-bit mode. And the funny thing is you'd think, well, the 4-bit mode, that'll use D0, D1, D2, D3. Uh, no, it uses D4, D5, D6, and D7. So what that means in practical terms is you're not going to be connecting up D0, D1, D2, D3, but you are going to be connecting up D4, D5, D6, and D7. Um, 
Now, notice also here we are looking at, again, looking at the pins. This is from the front. You'll notice they did say which is pin 1 and which is 16. That's important if you look up the data sheet for this device. It talks in terms of pin numbers. And so what they did is they put there on the left, they put pin 1. So you can see that VSS is pin 1, VDD is pin 2. When they number pins, they typically start from 1, not from 0. So keep that in mind. And then all the way to the right is pin 16. So uh, the si pin 16 is labeled K, pin 15 is labeled A, and so on. At any rate, so what it does is a VSS is a common abbreviation. It's another way of saying ground. So you'll hook that up to your Arduino's ground. VDD is the plus 5. Um, V0 is contrast. So what happens with uh, potentiometers is if the contrast isn't just right, they either show up as like a solid black box or just simply nothing. And so you adjust the potentiometer so you can read it. It's not brightness. Now, the way LCDs fundamentally work is they're a crystal display that generates no light. There's a light behind it that shines through, and this sort of, um, you know, gets dark or clear, and it, uh, you know, reduces or allows um, light to pass through. Um, by the way, you know, you've got your LCD TVs, and what those are is those are big LCD, they're color LCDs, and they've got sort of a traditional lamp behind it. When you see there's an LED TV, it's actually still LCD. What they mean is instead of using the traditional lamp, they have a bunch of LED, white LEDs behind it that provide the light. If you see OLED, organic LED, that's actually different. In that case, the dots are actually active, so the, the dots generate light themselves. But in each pixel. But for LCDs, there's a light source behind and you know it shines through. Um, RS here is register select. What you can do is you can tell this thing, hey, display this variable. You can also say, hey, here's a command. So like you can adjust where the cursor is. So the basic scheme is you say, hey, go to this location. Now I'm going to start to write. So the, this, the software is going to use this thing to control that. Now, the good news, you don't have to worry about it. The drivers do that for you. Read, write. Well, you can actually read from the LCD. You can write to it. I think for the way I'm saying, I'm just saying, look, just set it up to write. Simplify your life. Um, enable. Now, remember when we talked about parallel interfaces, we had the hands and everything. We needed a line to kind of say, okay, the data is ready. You can read it. That's what this is. And then A and K is the anode and cathode respectively. So you put the positive on the anode, the negative on the cathode, and that'll generate that'll turn on the backlight, the light that shines through the crystal display. Uh, if it's too light, you can do like you do with a resistor and put uh, a small, I mean like you do with the LCDs, and put a small resistor in line to limit the current, probably like 330 ohms or 200 ohms or something like that. I know a mine is really bright. What that translates to is it wears out your battery really quick when you're running off battery. All right, so uh, here's how you're going to connect it then. So in terms of pins 1 through 10, I'll show pins 11 through 16 on the next slide. But pretty much this is saying what I, you know, writing down what I just said. VSS goes to the Arduino ground, BDD to Arduino plus 5. V0 goes to the potentiometer. More on that in a second. I'll show you how to hook up that uh, potentiometer. RS goes to Arduino pin 2. Read, write just goes to the ground, so that just makes it so it's always just writing. Enable, that'll be on pin 3. D0, 1, 2, and 3, no connect. Just leave those floating in the wind. Now for pin 11, what you're going to do is you're going to put D4 on pin 4, D5 on pin 5, D6, you know, D7, and so on. And like I said, you're going to put the anode, the plus 5, if you want to put a a resistor in series, that's probably a good idea. And then you have the, the K goes to the Arduino ground. Now, what's up with this potentiometer? So, potentiometer is also known as a variable resistor. Double E's are fond of calling them POTS. That has nothing to do with things that were recently made legal in California. But uh, the picture here on the left is uh, kind of the symbol for an adjustable res a variable resistor or a POT. And what this is saying, the little, the little line with the arrow through it. Uh, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes also what you'll see is the arrow will kind of uh, look like the wiper. Um, and maybe that's a little more intuitive. And so that's the symbol for 10K. And they're, they're very simple. There's three pins and it's pretty hard to miss them up because there's two on one side and 
one on the other. And you put the ground and the five volts on the one. You put the, uh, what you're going to do is put this pin here for LCD. That's going to go to your Arduino. If you get five volts and ground backwards, it doesn't really matter. It just kind of means the, it, you know, it, it changes, you know, potentiometers are like twisty knobs. It changes um, which direction you turn counterclockwise or clockwise to make a higher contrast is all it does. Here's a look at the potentiometer. I put it next to a penny so you kind of get the size. This thing comes in two pieces. So you see that 10K there? Uh, you're like, how do I how do I adjust it? Do I need some crazy screwdriver? No, that that black thing next to it fits in. So if you look in the lower right, you see the black thing plugged in. So that, that makes your twisty knob. On the lower left, you're just seeing the back side of the pot. Um, okay, here we are. Double A is often referred to as a pot. You need to insert the knob in the pot. I already said that. You're going to adjust the potentiometer to set the contrast. So when you first turn on that LCD, if you don't see anything, don't panic. That just means, you know, try fiddling with your pot. Um, you know, if you take it all the way in one direction, you won't see anything. If you take it, take it all the way in the other direction, you'll just see rows of, of 16 rectangles, you know, solid rectangles. So you just sort of adjust it till it looks how you want it to look. Um, in terms of the software, what you're going to do is the, the library should already be installed in your Arduino environment. It's called Liquid, you do a pound include Liquid Crystal H. So what I'm doing is when you see the non-proportionally font that's in bold, that's what's going to be in your code. The rest of it, like this stuff, you know, is just comments. But you're going to have the include that's going to be at the top of your file. And also, above your setup file, you're going to declare a variable. So what happens here is normally if you have a variable called like count, you'd be like int count, right? Well, in liquidcrystal.h, it defines a structure called liquid crystal. And so what this is saying is you're declaring liquid crystal as a uh, variable and you're going to initialize with two, three, four, five, six. What that's saying is that's saying, hey, listen, I'm going to put the RS on Arduino pin, digital pin two. I'm going to put enable on three, D4 on four. You know, so we picked these pin numbers to kind of keep you sane. You know, it's fun, right? Two, three, four, five, six. But you don't have to do it. I mean, the, the thing in the comment up above says what it is. And if you want to put RS on pin, you know, some other pin, hey, you know, knock yourself out. You just have to adjust this call right here. So this is a, a variable declaration, and it's above your setup. It's out of scope of setup. So it's not in setup. It's not in loop. It's above them. And then what you do in setup is you... You do this function, lcd.begin, notice lcd is lowercase, notice begin is lowercase. And what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, it's a 16 by 2 LCD. So the first one says how many characters in a row, and the second one says how many rows. This software will work with a, you know, a, a 24 by 4 or a 1 by 16. It'll work with any number of configurations. You just have to tell it and set up, this is a configuration. Now in the loop, what you do is you you have to you have to tell it when you start to write. You have to locate the cursor. So zero zero is the upper left. So if you say set cursor zero zero, now the next time you print something, it'll start at the upper left. And then here it would say distance. So in the first box would be a D, the second box an I, the third box an S, and so on. And there it goes. And then I do a print right after that where I give it the value of the distance in centimeters and it'll print it out. Because I want you to print both centimeters and inches, you're going to have to abbreviate distance and you're, you know, you're going to have to kind of make it all. You'll have to find some way to make it clear. And you have to make it clear which one centimeters and which one's inches. You know, be creative. At any rate, that's uh, pretty much all we got. Um, thanks for listening. I know Harold had a very good time. Yeah, I sure did. Hi, I hope you're doing okay. Um, Harold and I are making the best of it, and uh, we will talk to you guys later and shoot me an email or come to the lecture time uh, if you got any questions. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>